Hello, True Crime family. This is Arctic Fox, True Crime. I'd like to take a moment to thank you for visiting my channel. While you're here, go ahead and click that red subscribe button. Also, click that like so that YouTube knows that you like my videos. And while you're at it, go ahead and ring that notification bell. That way you're alerted every time I post new content. Now today, we're going to be talking about the case of Michael Monkey Vaughn, who went missing out of Fruitland, Idaho. It's been almost four months since little Michael went missing from his home. And extensive searches have been done to try to find him. Um, you know, not only just the law enforcement, but the whole community has been out there searching, and his story is not, you know, it's not like a lot of these other cases that doesn't, that didn't get a lot of coverage. His story has actually gotten pretty good coverage around the world. I mean, I know that News Nation has been covering it quite a bit. Um, you know, it's, it's, but yet, even with all the coverage that the case is getting, Michael hasn't turned up. Um, it's it's just really a sad case. They call him Monkey because of how hyperactive he is. And he's just the sweetest little boy. Now, Michael's mother, her name is Brandy Neal, and she she's talked to News Nation and a couple of other reporters. And, you know, she's just frantic as any mother would be trying to get her son home. It's, you know, and it's not like this uh, Fruitland, Idaho, is a high crime area or anything like that. You know, according to, to everyone that and all the sources that I've seen, it's just a really friendly place and a real quiet community. You know, it's it's more of a farmland type of situation. I think the someone said it had a population of just five thousand people, I believe. Um but yeah, so it's not the type of place that you would expect, you know, some kid just to get snatched. Uh, now, Michael, he he wasn't snatched out, out of the home. I mean, he did, his mother was tied up for a moment, and Michael had walked out of the garage. He was just going to go a couple of houses, apparently, trying to find one, some of the older kids that might want to play with him, and... He just never, I mean, he disappeared. But then, you know, a block, he disappeared. And that's just, you know, the, a story that we hear way too often that they were just going to go to the next house over, and the next thing you know, no one's seen the child again. So, parents, I implore you, if you've got young kids, especially, you know, three, four, five, six, seven years old, I don't care if they're just going next door. Don't let them go by themselves because this is something that we see just way, way too often. But now this is from the interview that she gave with News Nation, uh, the mother, uh, Brandy. She, she said that he'd come out of the garage. The front door is pretty hard to get out of, and you would have been able to hear that opening. Um, again, she says her son was looking for older kids to play with, went to a neighbor's house, and another neighbor's house, and another neighbor's house, uh, which she says is typical for a summer night, but with Brandy at work and her husband inside checking on the toddler and ordering dinner, uh, neither even realized that Michael had left. So it's not a case of her saying, oh yeah, okay, you want to go next door? Just go, it'll be all right. It's just right next door. You know, the dad was working, and, you know, well, the dad was ordering dinner, and Brandy was at work, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's just sad. Um, it, it, it really is, um. You know, I can't imagine the living hell that these these parents are going through. You know, because we're five months in now, and no one knows where little monkey is. Um, you know, Brandy describes her son as pure excitement, and she talks about the joy of watching home videos of him, and, you know, learning to bake and and watching fireworks, um, and of course it says, you know, like I said, he got the name Monkey. 
from his nonstop energy and just being a complete joy to the family and everyone he loves. And now he does love race cars. He loves cars in general. And that's something where you got my heart child. Cause I love my cars too. I've got myself a 2014 Mustang and I do love my cars. Oh, so, you know, I, I kind of, I really feel for the family with what they're going through. I mean, no one ever imagined that, He'd end up the center of worldwide attention because of going missing. And it's just a sad situation. Oh. Now, to the west of where this family lives is a is the Snake River in Interstate 84. And, you know, apparently the local law enforcement, they've combed like 3,000 acres looking for him. And, you know, they've conducted multiple searches with every tool available. Just they haven't had any success. And they believe that Michael was snatched or abducted, basically. Um, now, they've gotten over 500 tips from all over the world, people calling in with information. And, you know... Like me, there's all kinds of slow, uh, social media sleuths who are working to bring poor Michael home. Um, and of course, you know, again, doesn't look like an Amber Alert's been issued in this case either. And this is what I don't understand. If they feel it was an abduction, and I know there's criteria for these Amber Alerts to be issued, but they already said they feel like this is, was an abduction. And yet, we're five months in, and there's been no Amber Alert issued? Why not? People, I say this almost every video I make. We have got to have Amber Alert reform. It's ridiculous the number of kids that go missing, and the police will say, oh yes, we feel like it was an abduction, and no Amber Alert ever gets issued. It's something like 10% of missing kids an actual Amber Alert gets issued for. The rest... Never an alert issued whatsoever, and it's crazy. Oh, but the see in Idaho, the first criteria for an Amber Alert is that there has to be proof of abduction, uh, which they said was missing in Michael's case. So the officials are going to say we feel like it was an abduction, but there's no proof that it was an abduction, so we're not going to issue an Amber Alert. It, I, it, it just frustrates me to no end. Um, so there's two lead of, there are two leads that authorities really need your help with. Identifying the driver of a white Honda Pilot that was seen in the area and locating a man with dark hair seen walking towards a drainage behind the neighborhood around the time that Michael went missing. Again, that's a white Honda Pilot that they're looking for. Unfortunately, I don't have the year. And also, it was a man with dark hair seen walking towards a drain ditch, drainage ditch behind the neighborhood around the time that Michael went missing. Uh, you know, honestly, you know, Brandy feels like someone may have been watching them. That's that's her mama's heart feeling. She feels like someone may have been watching them for a little bit, and just keeping an eye out, waiting for the opportunity to snatch Michael up. Um, but she she honestly she firmly feels that her his that her son's disappearance was definitely at the hands of someone that the family knows. And with the the changing of the seasons. You know, she's concerned about her baby boy being kept warm and, you know, his overall well-being, which is certainly understandable. You know. It's, it's, it's just crazy, and it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. I mean, I'm not a parent, but I love kids, and I'm wanting to try to adopt. And... <sighs> It just breaks my heart, these parents who who have their kids go missing like this through no fault of their own. And, I mean, honestly, if you all know anything about Michael, and I'm, I'm going to put his missing persons flyer up as the thumbnail of this video so that you can get a good look at what he looks like and everything. If you have any information, please you know, contact the proper authorities, and the contact information, if you have a tip or anything, will be in the description of this video down below. Um, 
you know, it, it's it's crazy. I mean, you know, and mother's intuition is telling her that she feels like her son's alive and that he'll sometime, someday come home. And she's been sleeping on the couch, you know, sleeping on the couch, hoping there will be a knock or she'll hear his voice wanting to try to get into the house. Now, you tell me that's not heartbreaking to anyone out there, whether you're a parent or not, you've got to feel for this poor mother. Um, of course, now the local authorities, they've denied any requests for interviews, but the chief did send an email to News Nation saying that Michael's parents have complied with all the investigative requests and that the case is not going cold. They're still working on leads. Um, there is a $50,000 reward for any information <coughs> that leads to the safe recovery of Michael. Uh, anyone with information about the child is urged to call 208-642-6006 or you can email findmichael at fruitland.org. Again, if you have any information about Michael, please call 208-642-6006 or you can email Find Michael at fruitland.org. And I've got a little bit of video here that I'm going to play for you. Just give me one moment here. Let's see, I think I'm going to go with this other video. If we can get it to play. <coughs> when you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. I do apologize for the commercial here. They're a little bit of a but lot of things. But advertisement pays for content, so I don't mind supporting them. We continue to follow a missing case tonight. A five-year-old from Idaho. His name is Michael Vaughn. He disappeared after walking out. Out of his family's home in Idaho almost five months ago and has not been seen since. Police have so said sad. that it is increasingly possible that Michael was abducted, yet uh, his disappearance at the time did not trigger an Amber Alert. I have a lot of questions Again, about this case. I know you do as Amber well. I'm going to bring in Jennifer Coffendoffer now. She's a former FBI agent. She's been closely following this case for the past couple of months. I'm going to spend a couple minutes with Jennifer asking my questions. And for you at home, all of you on social media who have been wanting to know about Michael's disappearance, you've got questions on your mind. You can send those questions to Twitter. You using the hashtag News Nation Prime. And then after the next commercial break, we'll have your questions for Jennifer as well. Jennifer, as always, thank you. Uh, this and case uh, came to our attention uh, in a uh, forceful way. We saw this, this case, little boy's face, monkey as his mom calls like him, just general, vanished into thin air. In I want to begin well. with, with what the mom said a moment ago in the piece. She said, I believe somebody may have been watching our family when my son disappeared. There was a white car in the area that police are looking into. There was a man in that drainage tunnel that was um, unfamiliar. And also you heard police say there's an increasing possibility that Michael was abducted. As an investigator with your years of experience, what stands out to you about this little boy and him vanishing? Well, you perfectly laid out, Marnie, all the facts that I would have said. This little boy is five years old. He's not a runaway. A cutie pie. He's not visiting a girlfriend. This little boy is gone and missing, last seen literally going door to door in his neighborhood, very vulnerable for, for being abducted. There was an unfamiliar car in the area, an unfamiliar man in the area, and there is, is anything other than 
abducted. Okay, so Jennifer, this is my question, but I have been following everybody on social media asking the very same thing about an Amber Alert. People want to know why was an Amber Alert exactly. not issued? The Idaho why didn't you State Police did Amber send us a, um, some clarification on, on this case early on. They said with the information that was available in this case, uh, uh, we made the same notification as an Amber Alert. It's called EMPA. Um, it's not it's the an emergency same thing. missing persons alert. It's but they said the though. state of Idaho follows national best and proven practices on endangered missing persons alert. So help us understand the decision by Idaho State Police or police in any matter when a child goes At least missing. they issued that. Most well, kids don't even get an EMPA. The Amber Alert being the gold standard for being able to find missing and abducted and endangered children is kept very close uh, to the vest in terms of being able to issue one. Um, they are used um, very sparingly, about seven out of 10 cases in terms of those uh, that have been issued an alert are actually recovered. And 17% of the seven out of 10 are actually directly, directly attributable to that alert. So they don't want to desensitize that alert. Um, it sticks out to anyone in law enforcement who is a part of receiving this alert because they know it means there's an endangered child. For all of the citizenry, when we receive that alert on our phone, we immediately take note of what the details are and we're on the lookout. It truly is the way to find missing children. So sadly, in this case, because they didn't have enough. All right, we're going to stop it there because I don't want to steal all of News Nation's video. But that's giving us quite a bit of information on what's going on with the case. And also the contact information as well, um, if you've seen Michael. Uh, again, I don't... 100% agree with their whole theories on not issuing an Amber Alert. Uh, I think you got to get these Amber Alerts out there. If nothing else, more of the EMPAs have to have to have to be issued. And I don't know about where you all live, but I can tell you here in Arkansas, even if they issue an Amber Alert, it's very rare. That the alert shows up on our cell phones. I have my phone set up for all the alerts to come through and I can tell you in the last five years that I've had T-Mobile service I may have had that many alerts come through on my phone and I've never had an EMPA come through on my phone so now I'll get a silver alert every once in a blue moon but I've never had one of those EMPAs come through that they're saying get the exact same attention as Amber Alerts do. So there's that just for, for your information out there. Uh, but we've got to find poor Michael for his family. You know, I can't imagine, you know, the heartbreak and everything that Brandy's going through, that his daddy's going through. I mean... And we hear these stories day in and day out, and it never gets any easier trying to cover these stories because they're all so heartbreaking. And all we can do is hope for the best possible outcome in these cases. But, the you know, it's been five months. You know, you, the... There are cases where these kids are found after years and years, but the the truth of the matter is, just putting facts out there, is usually if a child's going to be found safely, it's going to be within the first 24, 48, maximum 72 hours. That's, that's the best odds of a child being found safe, healthy, and alive. And the longer this case goes on, without any any updates, without any real significant breakthroughs. The the worse it looks for poor Michael and his family. And I'm hoping for the best possible outcome as we all are, 
but we've also we've got to make improvements to the system you know too many families are going through stuff like this with <clears throat> without any resolution to finding their loved ones I just covered the case of Morgan Nick on my channel if you want to go look at that and that's a 27 year old case a 27 year old case where they had the suspect that they're saying now did it now that he's dead they're saying that they believe this guy did it but you know why didn't they release that information see on that's another thing is a lot of times the authorities have information but they don't release it to the public. Now, I don't think that's the case here. These authorities seem to be trying to do everything they can to find Monkey, but there are cases out there where it is, like the Delphi case and the Summer Wells case even. They've, they've withheld a lot of information on that case. So, you know, that's, that's something that, you know, we need to push. We need to push these authorities that do hide information to bring everything forward because... I honestly feel like if you work with the public, the public's your best friend. The internet sleuths are your best friend, law enforcement. If you give us the information, we will work on it. We will work with you. Now, I do understand that you've got to keep some stuff very close to the vest because there are a lot of people out there, for whatever reason, that like to make false confessions. And that's fine. Keep a couple of tidbits close to the vest, but work with the public. The public is your best friend. You've got a lot of people out here that really want to find these kids. And so if you will work with us, we will work with you. Uh, you know, here's an update where uh, the Fruitland police, they're asking everyone who's helping to uh, see, uh, excuse me, they were asking the community that was helping to locate Michael to search the area of their residence, um, check their crawl spaces, their sheds, their trailers, and any other space where the five-year-old might have become stuck. Uh, if you see s something or find something of interest, you just call the 911 and stay there until police arrive, blah, da, 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 da. And, you know, Fruitland Police, I've got to give them props. They are on top of this. And they are certainly, you know, doing more than I've seen some departments do in a lot of these other cases that, that the creators have covered. Um, you know, that it looks like they did bring a tracking dog. Let's see. What well, started earlier in the day is a search only, and a tracking dog quickly escalated to ask for the public for help. Uh, let's see here. Now, they did bring a tracking dog in, and he got to a certain point and then just stopped, which adds to the abduction theory because. You know, you get halfway down the road and then he just loses your scent. There's a car or someone snagged him and took off with him. That's what it indicates to me. Uh, let's see here. As the search for Michael intensifies, the Fruitland Police Department begins to publish uh, far more detailed press releases. In these, we learned that canine units... Idaho Mountain search and rescue teams and even the Army National Guard helicopters were activated. Uh, on ground water levels were reduced in area canals to help authorities search and of course the public was asked to continuously search uh, you know and of course it just gives they, they are continuously giving updates which I love that the police are doing the updates constantly on this case for this little boy. Uh, it, it it warms my heart that you have a law enforcement team that is being so forthright with the community and with the public and wanting to work together with them to bring this child home to his parents. This is what we need to see so much more of going forward with communities all across the United States. Let the law enforcement work with the public. 
let them work with the community so that we can bring more of these kids home to their parents. Uh, let's see here. Yes, uh, let's see. Wanted the public to know that their engagement was appreciated, but they did, the police did let the citizens know that they could deny anyone's access uh, to their private property, which, I, from what I've seen, people have not been denying access. Everyone has been welcoming people to search, and, and I love this community for how much, how passionate they are to try to bring Michael home. Uh, let's see here. As the search went nationwide, over 13 different law enforcement agencies were announced as activated in the search for the missing child. As the case grew, the search intens intensified, and, you know, it, it's just, it's gone crazy. Now, this is Michael's missing po persons poster. I'm going to leave this up for a minute. Michael Joseph Vaughn, now he goes by Monkey, or he will answer to Monkey. Um, he is five years old, white. Um, uh, it looks like three foot seven, sixty pounds with blonde hair and blue eyes. If you have any information concerning Michael, please contact the Fruitland Police Department dispatch at 208-642-6008, or you can email tips to find Michael at fruitland.org. Again, that's uh, 206-642-6006. I'm sorry, 208-642-6006. Or you can email your leads to find Michael at Fruitland.org. Now they've gone ahead and passed out the, the missing posters all over the place. Um, the, <clears throat> I haven't heard yet of any billboards being put up, but I would imagine that if they don't find him soon, that <clears throat> will probably be the next thing that we see, is billboards of Michael being put up. I know they've done that in the Cody Bigsby case. They've put some billboards up, and that would greatly help. In fact, if anyone in the Fruitland area is listening Y'all may want to take up a collection to try to put some billboards for Little Michael up. I think that's some of the best advertisement you can get. And I have seen time and time again that once those billboards with the reward and everything go up, that's when these kids get found. So billboards are a very helpful tool in bringing these children home. Uh, the Fruitland Police Department actually received a $10,000 donation from an anonymous local resident to serve as a reward for the safe return of five-year-old Michael, it says. So, you know, it's it's incredibly heartwarming to see these tips coming in, people making donations for the reward. Uh, you know, tips can be sent... Yeah, I'm sorry. Tips can be sent not only to find Michael at Fruitland.org, but also to Crime Stoppers, uh, 343cops.com. So there's that as well. And again, I'll try to put all of this in the description of the video um, down below as well. And, and I really, you know, we, we've got to bring this little boy home. I can't, like I said, it's so important that we keep an eye out for Michael Monkey Vaughn. If you see something, say something. Keep your ears out, your eyes open. Someone has to know where this poor little boy ran off to. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I. it just breaks my heart. I mean, I can't imagine being a parent and having your, your child snatched from you like that. Uh, now, it looks like the reward has grown... Uh, a little bit at now at twenty six thousand dollars, and so I mean honestly, it's not about the reward money in my opinion. I'm glad that they've got it out there because it is enticement for someone to tell people what they know. But honestly, I just want the child brought home. I want his parents to have closure. I want Michael brought home. I want to make sure Michael's safe and that he's playing with his cars and trucks like he likes to do. That's all I care about is bringing this child home. Um, now, it looks like they're looking for two different vehicles, uh, it said. 
Now, I know we were talking about the white Honda Pilot earlier, but it said that there were two vehicles that were captured. And while police stressed that these vehicles and the people driving them were not declared suspects, they definitely want to talk to them. Um, but it doesn't say what that second vehicle that they were looking for is. And I, I haven't been able to find any information in what I've been reading as to what that second vehicle was. Um, let's see here. Just scrolling through. Ah, the reward increased again. Looks like it's at $52,206. So, I mean, this computer, this community is really coming forward and putting together money to bring this little boy home, and that warms my heart. I mean, it's, it's incredible. But we, we need to do everything we can to try to bring this kid home for his family. It, it's incredible how, how this community has pulled together. And I, I wish we'd see more communities do this. I mean, I know that we do see communities come together, but it seems like in a lot of cases we have the communities and law enforcement fighting each other. And in this particular instance, we have everyone work. We we have everyone working together, and that's exactly how it should be: it is everyone working as a team to try to bring closure and to try to bring the best possible resolution to these cases. Oh. And it's about the, the same information here. So, this is the map of the area where uh, Michael went missing. I'll just leave that up for a moment. If any of you all out there are familiar with this area... <coughs> and you've seen anything, again, information will be down in the description below where you can make contact and and turn your tips in or whatnot. Um, I'm going to close the video out for now, and if I have any updates to the case, I will definitely post another video updating everyone on what's going on. Uh, I do appreciate you all for watching and listening to me present this story to you. Again, as I close out, I would appreciate it if you clicked on that red subscribe button, rang that bell so that you get notifications every time I post new content, like the video, and share the video as it really helps us creators out. And thank you once again for watching, and you all have a wonderful day.